Hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is William Kwame Napo. I'm an artist from Ghana, West Africa. And I do primarily watercolor images of fishermen, uh, women, market scenes, and children. And my work focuses primarily under the, the fisherman umbrella. And we have, and I, what I try to do is talk about their children and their wives and their family life all through the umbrella of fishing scenes. Um, I do fishermen because it was a challenge for me growing up. I never really saw the ocean. It was different. I lived inland. My dad used to work at a university inside uh, in the middle of Ghana, not on the ocean or anywhere close to the ocean. So when I got a chance to go back home after living here for a while and was able to just walk anywhere, I went to the ocean, the capital, Accra, which is on the ocean, and saw all this beautiful, beautiful scenes of fishermen and loved it. So I kept taking photographs so that I could build a, a work from that. And I've been going back since 89 and every time I go, I will revisit similar places and come back and tell stories about the fishermen. And I use different symbols from Ghana. They're called the Dinkra symbols, which tell different stories about what's going on or our proverbs or stories and different genres about uh, our traditions and culture through these symbols. And I use them in my work to tell different feelings or different ideas where I'm going with each particular image in most of the work that I do. Not all of them, but in a lot of them. So that's what my work primarily dwells on. Um, we also have a lot of uh, folklore. And the folklore dwells on different stories. And some of the stories are fun. Some of them are just images to let people know how Ghana is or what it's all about or the Ashanti people, a particular speaking group of people and how they speak. Um, we have folklores about Anansi and Anansi is the spider. He's really really crafty, very crafty creature and so we have a lot of stories about Anansi. So what I like to do is read one of these stories for you. Um, and this is called Kweku Anansi. Kweku means uh, born on Wednesday. And so it's a day name. My day name is Kofi, because I was born on Friday. And if you're a female, it's Efua, and all different ones. So you, if you hear those names, K, Kofi, Kwame, Kwesi, they're all different day names. So this is the story about Anansi and the gum statue. Once upon a time, there lived in a small village a man called Kukwenansi and his wife, Kornole, and their son, Intikuma. There was farming in the village, so Anansi and his family decided to start a big farm. They worked all day without rest. However, Anansi, he did not like to work too much. He always feigned he was not well, and so he would not go out with them to, to the farm. His wife and his son, they did most of the work. And he would just go home and sleep and smoke his pipe. One day, he went to the farm, and when he got there, he realized, oh my gosh, the vegetables, the corn, the yams, all the fruits are all ripe. And he said to himself, this is really nice. This is really nice. Then he said, hmm, I have a plan. So he went home singing a nice song, an old festival song. And he called his wife and his son to his bedroom and said to them, he says, you know, I, Kukwe Nancy, I'm not going to live forever. One of these days, I'll pass, I'll die. And when I die, promise me that whatever 
I'm going to tell you, you do that for me. Because that's all my wishes that I want. So he went on to tell him, says, when I die, I want you to bury me in the center of our farm. And I want you to put certain things inside my coffin. A pot, a spoon, a ladle, a box of matches, some charcoal, some kerosene, and add some salt, and dry fish, and palm oil. And this bird, he said, make sure you put my pipe in there too. He says, my last wish is that after you put me in the coffin, do not cover it with, with earth, just with some leaves and flat wood. That will be okay. And he breathed deeply. These things which I'm asking you to do for me will help me find my way to heaven. So I almost forgot one thing. Use a simple coffin and don't nail it to the top. Leave the lid just a little bit open. So that way I can find my way to heaven. Cornelay and Intikuma nodded. They wondered, who was wrong with Anansi? The next day, Anansi fell ill. He grew worse and worse as the day goes by. Every day he got worse, worse. And at the end of the week, he died. The whole village came and gave him a befitting burial. All his wishes were fulfilled. After the burial, Kornole and Intakuma thought it was the time for the harvest and the farm that they would enjoy the fruits of their labor. Surprisingly, each morning when they arrived on the farm, they noticed someone was eating a lot of their food. A lot of their food was missing. This went on for some time until they could no longer bear it. Kornole wondered, Intakuma, what can we do to stop this thief? What can we do? And Zakuma thought and he said he had a plan. So he says, let us make a gum statue and place it in the center of the farm to frighten and possibly catch the thief. It's a good idea, said Cornole. The next morning, the gum statue was made and placed in the center of the farm. Anansi woke up at midnight, as usual, to continue what he had been doing in the past weeks, which was stealing as much food as he wanted, cooked it, and ate it, and went back to sleep. He always ate with satisfaction and smoked his pipe under the moonlight. That night, as soon as Anansi woke up, he saw someone in the distance. He thought that since the farm belonged to him and his family, he could challenge anybody who came to the farm. Hey, who are you? And he went a bit closer to the frightened intruder. What are you doing here? He yelled again, but there was no answer. He went closer and he screamed. If you do not answer me, I'll beat you severely. Again, there was no answer. He then slapped the gun statue with all the strength of his left on the left cheek. And his right hand got stuck to the statue. If you don't leave my hand, I will hit you again with my other hand. He slapped the statue on the other cheek and his left hand also got stuck. He then used his head and his stomach. Finally, he kicked his legs and found that he was glued from head to toe to the statue. Realizing he was trapped, Anansi began to beg the gun, let me go, please. I'll give you anything on the farm. Let, let, let me go. Anansi pleaded and pleaded and could not get away. The gum 
statue never said a word. Till daybreak. When the day came, he was covered in sweat. The sun began to rise and Kornole and Intekuma arrived on the farm. From a distance, they saw that someone was stuck to the gum statue. They ran back to the village to call all the villagers. When they arrived and returned, when they arrived, they were surprised to find Anansi, who everyone believed was dead, stuck to the gum statue. The villagers jeered at him. As soon as he was freed, Anansi ran as fast as his tiny legs could carry him and hid in the ceiling of a room. He remained there to the ceiling of the room to this very day. This is the Anansi story.